Oh, the captain's out on patrol. Uh, yes, sir. Lieutenant Joyce. Lieutenant Joyce in the chief inspector's office. No, sir, he didn't say when he'd be back. I can put out a call for him. You are by transcription in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right, Lieutenant. I'll tell him. Yes, sir. As soon as he gets back in the house. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly. Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was doing day duty, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The morning was a quiet one in the precinct, and I spent a good part of it cleaning up accumulated paperwork, reading and signing reports and communications. Shortly before noon, I met with the precinct youth patrolman, Ezra D. Winkler, in regard to plans for juvenile recreation activity that we would discuss with the precinct coordinating council, which is composed of community-minded persons who reside or conduct their businesses in the precinct. After I had my meal, a car came by the house for me, and I went out on patrol. At 3.25 p.m., while I was still away from the house, Lieutenant Gorman was on duty in the muster room as desk officer, and the telephone switchboard was manned by Sergeant Waters. Twenty first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah? Who told you that? No, lady. You have to apply to the Department of Licenses. 112 White Street. Like the color. W-H-I-T-E. You want the telephone number? That's worth four, eight, six hundred. Yes, ma'am. It's all right. Sergeant. Yes, sir? Show me the inspector down here, huh? Yes, sir. Hello? This is Lieutenant Gorman. Let me talk to Lieutenant King. All right, I'll hold on. Uh, Lieutenant. Yes. How about that notification, the 44th? You want me to ring up there again? No, wait a while. He said I'd keep trying until they found somebody home. Okay. Yes, sir. Hello, Matt. Uh, listen, you owe me a flight to 51. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Are you the one I see? Uh, just a second, lady. Okay, Matt. Lieutenant will be with you. I'll see you. Yeah. You can talk to him now. Yes, ma'am? I had my car parked for just two minutes over on Lexington Avenue while I took a dress back to a store, and the policeman gave me a ticket. It, it was just for two minutes, that's all. The sign says no parking. Doesn't say you can park for two minutes, lady. Well, he could have had the decency to realize, couldn't he? The sign says no parking. That's what it means. It was just for two minutes. Well, I think that's a lot of nerve. After all, how was I going to get into the store if I didn't park there? Lady, you parked in a restricted zone and you got a summons. There's nothing I can do about it. If you want to argue, I'd suggest you appear in court and talk to the magistrate. Well, what good will that do? You can do a lot more for you than I can. I can't do a thing. I don't know. It's getting so it's not a free country anymore. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sergeant? Yes, sir? I'll speak if you want it. When Coley rings in, I want to talk to him. Yes, sir. And I want you to see it. Go ahead. Take the call. Okay. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Waters. No, sir, he's not. He's out on patrol. Lieutenant Joyce, Chief Inspector's office. Uh, yes, sir. I expect him in any minute. He's got to turn out the platoon at four. Well, I uh, I can put out a radio call for him. All right. Yes, sir. By the way. The Chief Inspector's office. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Joyce there wants to skip it a call. You'd better put it out on the air. Yes, sir. Hello, CB. Sergeant Waters is at 21st. Would you have 681 call at 21st? Okay. A 
message to call the chief inspector's office direct. You don't think the skip is getting made, do you, Lieutenant? No, should I know? I haven't heard anything about any promotions coming up. It's not impossible for them to make promotions without you hearing about it. Well, I don't know about that. Here are sixty ones, Red. Oh, thanks, Matt. Uh, Lieutenant King, did you hear anything about any promotions? Yeah, I think I did hear something at the lineup this morning. We're supposed to be making a couple of captains and about ten lieutenants this week. Are they making any deputy inspectors? Why? It was just a message to Captain Kennelly to call the chief inspector's office. Well, well, could be. How about you, Red? Where are you on the captain's list? Way down. Oh, well, here's Captain Kennelly. We were just around the corner when the call came over. Hello, Red. Captain. A message for you to call Lieutenant Joyce at the chief inspector's office, Captain. Oh, yeah? Uh, as soon as I signed the blotter. Did you hear anything about any promotions, Captain? No, Matt. I didn't hear a thing. Uh, Lieutenant Joyce? Yes, sir. Uh, get him on the line for me, will you? Yes, sir. Right away, Captain. You want to see me, Matt? I can wait, Captain. What's doing, Red? Hello, Very quiet, Captain. Well, that's Chief good. Will you be around for a minute, Matt? Yes, sir. Uh, Sergeant, I'll take the call in my office. Yes, sir. Twenty first precinct, Captain Canelli. Lieutenant Joyce on the line, Captain. All right. Chief Inspector's office, Lieutenant Joyce. Twenty first precinct, Captain Canelli. Thank you, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Yeah. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Give me a line on here, Sergeant. tomorrow morning. You and the kids will be there. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. It sure took a long time. Do you know where you're going to be? No. No, not yet, honey. When will you find out? Tomorrow. Do you think it might be hot and queen? Oh, that would be fine if it's close to home. You wouldn't lose so much time traveling. Well, it may be, Ellen. I can't tell yet. Well, I hope so. Whatever the job is, the money's a lot better. Eight hundred and twenty dollars more, eight thousand and fifty. You don't sound very happy about it, Fred. Oh, I'm happy about the rank and the money. I, I just hate losing a command. That's all, especially this one. Well, don't worry, you'll get another one, Fred. You have to buy new uniforms again. No, no, the uniforms are the same, except the cap, just new insignia. If you want to, yeah. But uh, don't call my brother. I'd like to tell him myself. I'll call him when I get home. Oh, what time do you think? Oh, about 7 o'clock if I don't get stuck. Don't get stuck here, please. All right. I'll try not to. Bye, honey. Bye, Inspector. I love you. Yeah, me too. Waiting to see me, Matt? Uh, well, yeah, Captain. I just thought if you had a few minutes, we could talk about some of those pistol license applications. 
Well, why don't you save them and talk to the new captain? Oh, you're getting made. Yeah. Congratulations, Captain. Oh, uh, thanks, Red. All the luck in the world, Captain. Matt, thanks. You got made, huh, Captain? Our skipper? Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks, Sergeant. When's it affecting? Swearing in is at 10 a.m. tomorrow. I understand they're making some captains and lieutenants, too. You hear anything about that, Captain? No, not a word, man. Well, do you know what your new job's going to be? No. You don't have any idea who we're going to get around here, do you? Sergeant, I don't know a thing except that I was instructed to report at 10 a.m. tomorrow for promotion. You want to come into my office, man? Yes, sir. Where are you on the captain's list tonight? <laughs> Nowhere near the top. Go ahead. Thanks. Huh. Sit down, man. Yes. Well, I sure hate to see you go, Captain. Yeah. Now, I'm not too happy about leaving myself. The best I can hope for is to be the second man in the division. Yeah. You fight to get to the top of the list, and they promote you, and you're scratching around at the bottom again. There's no chance of you're going back into the detective division, is there? No, I doubt it. It could be you were a squad commander before the major captain. Yeah, but you know all the deputy jobs in the Bureau of Field. Yes, sir, I know. Your wife happy? Yeah, yeah, I called her. She's pretty pleased. That's good. In case you know what job you'd like and where. Yeah, I know, Matt, but there's no use saying. I've got no chance of getting it. Well, I... I can tell you this, Captain. I know the men around this command will be pretty sorry to see you go. I think that applies to everybody. Matt, if they're sorry to see me go, that's the best send-off I could ask for. When I turned out the platoon for the night tour at 4 p.m., I told the men that it would be the last time I spoke to them as their commanding officer. After the turnout, I went into the back room where I shook hands with the men of the 8 to 4 platoon who were just coming off the job. At 6 p.m., I changed to civilian clothes and packed my uniform into a suit box patrolman Bailey, the station house attendant, had found in the locker room. I signed the blotter and left the station house. The next morning, with my wife, my son, and my two daughters, I drove to police headquarters at 240 Center Street in downtown Manhattan. While my family went upstairs to the trial room where the promotion ceremonies would be held, I reported to the chief inspector's office as directed. There I saw the 17 other men, patrolmen, sergeants, and lieutenants, who were to be promoted. I learned that I was the only officer with the rank of captain or above to be promoted. The chief inspector, the highest-ranking member of the force, spoke to us briefly in his office, and then we proceeded to the trial room for the formal ceremonies which were presided over by the police commissioner. After we were sworn in by the chief clerk of the department, I took my family out to lunch at one of the several fine Italian restaurants in downtown New York. Meanwhile, back at the station house, Lieutenant Gorman was in charge as desk officer, and Sergeant Waters was on telephone switchboard duty. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. All right. You'll take your meal now, huh? Or where you be? Yeah. Okay. Well, Lieutenant, I guess the skipper has that oak leaf pinned on it by now. Yeah. We could do a lot worse, you know that. An awful lot worse. I know. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Uh, no, Lieutenant King, nothing yet. Uh, no, sir. No, there hasn't been anything on the teletype for an hour. Yeah, I'll let you know. Yes, sir. As soon as it comes over. <laughs> Lieutenant King, he wants to know if we heard where the skipper was transferred to and who the new boss is going to be here. No, 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 no. What do you got there, Sergeant? Willie Sutton, Jr., no. Sergeant. No, 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 no,
know the name of the owner of the car, Pa? Well, I got the registration number, Lieutenant. I left a note in the car for him to come to the station house that we got his property. No, no, I know lie. The, the package, he, he belonged to me. They wouldn't even let you inside Saks Fifth Avenue. What's his name? Uh, Ole Lagner, he says. No, he's mine. I just come from, from shopping. Yeah? Huh? What's in the package? What did you buy? Uh, uh, different things. Take him up to the detective. No, no, no detective. Come on, let's no. go, Ali. No, 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 no. Oh, uh, do we know who the new skipper's going to be at, Lieutenant? No, not yet. Oh. Go on, Ali. No, I don't suppose. Well, that might, might turn out to be a pretty good color, Lieutenant. Yeah. Could be the boy who's been robbing us blind. There it is. Yeah. Special orders, that's it. The skip is on the top of the list. The following captain, having been promoted to deputy inspector, is transferred and assigned as indicated to take effect at 4 p.m. today. Francis J. Kennelly from the 21st Precinct to Manhattan West Borough Headquarters. Well, that's that. Manhattan West Borough Headquarters, that's not bad. Better for him than a division, I think. At least he's there with a high brass to see him around. It could be a good job. Ah, uh, get it. Yes. Sir. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Well, they're coming through right now, Lieutenant King. Manhattan West Borough Headquarters. Yes, sir. Could be. Well, that's all that's come through so far. No, sir, we don't know yet. They didn't get to the transfers yet. All right. Yes, sir. Lieutenant King, he's coming downstairs. Oh, uh... How many lieutenants did they make, Lieutenant? Six and two captains. Do you know any of them? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sergeants. Eight. Here's the transfer. It ought to be fresh. The following transfer is hereby ordered to take effect at 4 p.m. today. Captain Vincent T. Cronin from the 17th Division to 21st Precinct. Did you ever hear of him, Lieutenant? No. Vincent P. Cronin. Well, we don't know him. I suppose we'll get there, huh? I don't doubt it. Oh, here's Lieutenant King. Well, who'd you get, Red? Vincent P. Cronin, 17th Division. You know him, huh? No. Did you ever hear of him? No. Excuse me. Well, it'll have to be something to make up for what we're losing. Yeah. Let's see the promotions, huh? Yeah. No, Captain Canelli isn't here. And it's deputy inspector, Kelly, now. Don't know a soul around here. Yeah, Neither do I. Well, we, we move up a couple of notches on the list, Red. Yes, sir. We've got to move okay. faster than that. Yes, sir. He'll be coming back here, won't he, Inspector Kennelly? Oh, yeah, he's got an office full of personal belongings. Have you decided what kind of a guy this new skipper is? Well, I've got a good friend, a squad commander out there in that division in Brooklyn. Maybe he knows him. I could ring him up. Well, sure, Matt, why not? Give Lieutenant King a line there, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Right away. I don't know how much good it'll do us to know, but I'm anxious to find out. Oh, so am I. You must have been in plain clothes work in that division, huh? You must have been, yeah. Hello. Lieutenant Ziegler there. Lieutenant King, 21st Squad. All right. He's there. Good. I was in the academy with a Cronin, I think. But I think it was Paul Cronin. Hello, Danny. Matt King. All right, it's fine. Oh, it's pretty quiet. How are things out there? Yeah, that's good. Listen, Danny, the precinct commander here got made a deputy inspector today. Yeah, that's right, Frank Kennelly. We're getting a captain from the 17th Division, uh, Vincent Cronin. Yeah, I know you do. That's why I called. The boys around here are kind of anxious to know what to expect. Oh. Uh, he is, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Maybe it would have been better to be surprised. Maybe. He what? Oh, yeah? Well, how is he working with the detectives? Hmm? I 
I think. Well, thanks, Danny. Oh, she's fine. Martha? Good. Let's get together and cut up some scores. Okay, I'll see you, Danny. Uh, wait a minute. I'll be right back. He's not on plain clothes, dude. He's been a fly captain out there. What'd you say he was, Lieutenant? He's been a fly captain in the division out there. Oh. Did you say what kind of a guy he was? He works hard. He earns his pay. That's good. And so will you. After I finished lunch with my family, I drove them home to my residence in Ozone Park, Queens. I went into the house and got a suitcase out of the closet to bring into New York in order to pack my personal effects at the station house and take them to my new command. A precinct commander's night tours call for him to be on the job for 16 hours, and his office becomes a second home. When he's transferred, an accumulation of extra uniforms, toilet articles, and other personal effects must be packed and moved. I was about to go out the door when some neighbors dropped in to congratulate me, and consequently it was not until after 2 p.m. that I was able to start for New York. While I was driving in, a tall, well-built man in civilian clothes walked in the front door of the station house and headed for the desk. Yes, sir? Can I help you? I'm Captain Cronin. Oh, hello, Captain. Lieutenant Gorman. Lieutenant? I'll uh, come around sign the blotter. Yes, sir. Here you are, sir. That's all right. I'll use my own pen. Yes, sir. All right. Let me know. What time do these special orders come through, Lieutenant? About 12.15, Captain. I gave Cahill that complaint, Lieutenant. Okay. Captain Cronin, Sergeant Waters. Captain? Glad to know you, Sergeant. I uh, want someone to help me get some things out of my car, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. A foul's in the back room, Lieutenant. All right, get them, will you? Okay, Lieutenant. Inspector Kennelly still has most of his things in your office, Captain. Will he be in this afternoon? Uh, yes, sir. We expect him. All right. I believe he's on his way. Who are the other lieutenants uh, attached to this command? There's John Bryan, Gerald E. Pope, and Harry Snyder. Snyder. Was uh, Snyder a sergeant in the 83rd? Yes, sir. And I think I know him. Captain, this is Patrolman Farrell, Captain Cronin. Farrell? Well, good to meet you, Captain. My car's parked out front, Farrell. Blue 52 Dodge, two yes, doors. Sir. The tan suitcase, a cardboard box in the back seat. Would you bring him in here? I'll get the rest later. Sure, Captain. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I'll go with him. Yes, sir. We'll be right back. Yes, sir. Well, what do you think? I should honor what I think. He looks tough to me. Well, that was the word, wasn't it? So don't be surprised. I'm not surprised, Lieutenant. I'm just curious. Take the call. Yes, sir. First precinct, Sergeant Waters. All right, 11. Oh, uh, listen. Be on your toes now. The new skipper's on a job. All right. Sergeant. Yes, sir? Bring upstairs to the detective. Tell Lieutenant King. Yes, sir. This is Sergeant Waters on TS. Let me talk to Lieutenant King. Oh, he is? All right. When you get a chance, will you tell them the new skipper is in the house? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Lieutenant King is talking to a suspect. Goldman says he'll tell him as soon as he gets a chance. Okay. Uh, Sergeant, would you give us a hand? Now get the door to the office. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Oh, I can take that, Captain. That's all right. Just open the door. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Powell. Yes, sir. Just set it down any place. Yes, sir. I won't put anything away until Inspector Canale gets his things cleaned out. Uh, open a window, will you, Sergeant? Yeah, sure, Captain. Thanks, Farrell. That's all. You're welcome, Captain. Glad to have met you. Yeah. Inspector Canale has the only key to his desk in the closet. All right. Oh, uh, there he is. Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Captain. Oh, I'm sorry, Inspector. That's all right. I'm not accustomed to it myself. Uh, Deputy Inspector Kennelly, Captain Cronin. Cronin? Let him eat, Inspector. Well, uh, I better get back on the board. Now go ahead and uh, close the door, Sergeant. Yes. Well, I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to clean my things out before you got here. That's all right. Don't worry about it, Inspector. It's been a pretty busy day. 
for both of us. Well, that's a pretty nice office. Yeah, it's comfortable and big enough. Uh, sit down, Cronin. Yes, sir. You'll find this a pretty busy shop. So I heard. For the most part, we've got a good bunch of men in this command. They work hard. They're interested in the job. That's good. There are a few I've had to watch. If you'd like to know about them, I'll be glad to tell you. No, sir, I'd rather you didn't tell me. I'd rather find out for myself. Sure. That's usually the best way. Go ahead, Captain. Take it. You're command now. Yeah. Yes, sir. 21st Precinct, Captain Cronin. Sergeant Ward is on CS, Captain. Yes? See me call with a report of an armed robbery and shooting. 71st Election. All right. Have a car come by the house for me. I'll roll. Yes, sir. Armed robbery and shooting. 71st and Lexington. Well, you're off to a fast start. I guess I am. Oh, I'll uh, leave the keys to the closet on the desk with Lieutenant Gorman. Yes, sir. Is that all you've got on that, Sergeant? It's all CB had. Uh, your car's on the way, Captain. Anything more on that 70 person, Lex? Nothing, Lieutenant. Matt? We've got a job, Captain. Yeah, I know. This is Captain Cronin, Lieutenant King, the squad commander. Lieutenant? Aye. Right. I'll be out in the car in a minute. Go on. Okay, we'll get together later, eh, Captain? Yeah, sure. Oh, well, uh, if you're going over there, I'll ride with you, okay? Yes, sir. Glad to have you. I'll ride with the detective, Sergeant. Cancel my car. Yes, sir. Are oh, you going to roll on that, Inspector? No, I... I don't think so. I'll, I'll just go and get my stuff together. Yes, sir. But, uh, Lieutenant... Yes, sir? Let me know what there is to it. When he first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah. Yeah. Who is it? His wife? He didn't know with what? Oh, yeah? All right. I'll send the officers right over there. Do you live in a building there, too? And so it goes. Sure. Around the clock, through the week, every the day, right every over. year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, transcribed. A factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Ganelli, James Gregory as Captain Cronin, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King, Harold Stone as Sergeant Waters, Featured in tonight's cast were Ralph Camargo, Santos Ortega, Frank Moss, and Ethel Everett. Written and produced by Stanley Niss. Art Hannah speaking.